Hey, what is up guys? Evan Aldo here. Wanted to make a video that's a little bit different today. Um, been a while since I've only done maybe a few videos in this exact format when I first started this channel, but I wanted to just talk about a few resources that I've um, found and got a lot out of over the years. Um, a lot of podcasts, YouTube channels, books, I believe everything here is um, some of that and obviously the concept of law of attraction. Um, there's a lot I've learned over the years, and you know I think a lot of these things I don't know 100% if they've you know made me very successful at a young age, but I think they've definitely helped, especially Naval Ravikant, especially a lot of these things that I'll talk about. And yeah, wanted to go through it. I'm sure a lot of you would be really interested in that. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. So Naval Ravikant, let's start with that. So you know, there's no particular order really for any of this. Um, one of the things I liked in particular was Naval Ravikant, um, and he is kind of, I guess, it's a long podcast, like three hours long. One of my mentors a few years ago, I think in 2019, sent me it, and he told me, "Yeah, man, it's like long. It's three hours long or whatever." But listen to it; it's really good. And I've listened to this over the years, probably. Haven't listened to it you know, too much lately, but I used to listen to it a lot, like probably five, four or five times over the years, and I got a lot out of it. Like th this guy knows a lot about a lot. Like he knows kind of modern day wealth creation. You know, we know it's it's different than it used to be. You know, you need leverage today to really get ahead. You need to use the internet in in certain ways. Kind of the internet is how you use leverage. That's that's kind of one of his main concepts. He has a tweet storm that's good too. You should, I would say, just listen to the podcast because the tweet storm, I think you can get some bits and pieces out of that. Um, that's, you know, just a real, you know, quick summary kind of that doesn't take too much long, too long to go through. But the podcast is really good. And there's also a book, it's called The Naval Manac as well. Um, and you should probably check that out as well. That's a lot of what it, I think almost basically what it says, Naval Manac, something like Manac. Well, manic, <laughs> manic, manic, something like that. Valmanic, something of that nature. It's a book as well. There's an audio book too. I only I've listened to the audio book. It's good, but I don't think there's too much in here that's much different from what's in the podcast. The podcast is the most important thing I would say. That is like life changing. I mean, there's life changing. There is um, another YouTuber. I haven't watched too much of him. He's not on this list, but Andrew Kirby. Um, talks about how he like made a million dollars kind of using the methods in this. And, you know, I'll talk about it a little bit here. Um, the hourly rate concept is kind of, you know, you have your value, you know, what's kind of the value is, you know, what, what is your work? What is your value per hour? Kind of like an hourly rate. And, you know, let's say your hourly rate is, you know, he says, you know, should make it higher. His was, I think they start a thousand dollars an hour, then went up to $5,000 an hour. And if there was anything, you know, in his life, kind of what he would base it off of, if there was anything in his life that, you know, took, you know, he would only save, you know, maybe a few hundred dollars or 30 bucks or 50 bucks or so for that nature of something that would take an hour, it wasn't worth it. You know, like returning a broken printer that you bought, you know, things that aren't worth your time, that kind of thing. So it's a lot of like outsourcing there. You know, he's big on outsourcing, not necessarily outsourcing and hiring, you know, people in a faraway country from where you are, but maybe, you know, paying somebody to do something for you to save time so you could work on other things to make more money. Maybe a little trip. I might not be explaining it in the best way, but you know, your most valuable asset is really time. So in an ide ideally, you know, if you're somebody who could make $5,000 an hour or make, you know, $500 an hour for that matter, doing your craft. And, you know, just an example, I think he said, you buy a printer that's broken and it's going to take you an hour to go back and return it or whatever, you know, it's a $50 printer. Is it worth it? You're better off to maybe just buy another one on Amazon. You know what I mean? Don't waste too much time or another way to outsource these things. Maybe you hire an assistant you know, for cheaper or whatever who could do this type of stuff for you. You know, maybe if you, you know, have a business, you don't have an assistant, you're making all these calls, doing all this nonsense, you're spending hours on that and you're not really making, not saving or making too much money doing it hire somebody to do that for you because that's that's leverage as you get higher and higher you're going to need more of that you know becoming a business person becoming these type of things you're going to need more of that you know obviously you know jeff bezos didn't do it all all himself and i don't think you know there's less employees now you know a lot less employees from the internet and you could use a lot more leverage from the internet but you need to have at least some type of management skill i 
I think. Um, so that's really big there with hourly rate concept. That's something I'm trying to work on more. And leverage, kind of what I explained, you know, a lever leverage could be, you know, a digital product that you sell. You know, I have leverage on YouTube. You know, people could watch this video all over the world. I don't have to physically tell all this to somebody. I don't have to spend a lot of time explaining this to my friends. I could just send them this video. That's kind of like a leverage type thing. And I could also earn, you know, it's not a lot of money. I don't get the uh, most crazy high views, but I, I can make a little bit in maybe ad revenue off the channel every month. And that's another form of leverage. Um, law of attraction is a, a big, big piece. And it's, I never learned like the exact um, wording of it until not that long ago, really, probably like 2021. I really, I heard about it from um, Carl from the moon, which I, I know probably a lot of people getting into like leverage trading or crypto trading, you probably find him as one of the first people, him in MM crypto. And one of his videos, um, you know, that I, that I liked, um, you know, some people don't like them, some people like them, you know, everybody, especially in the bear market, you know, people are, have different views, but, you know, one of the videos, I forget which one it was exactly, but he was talking about, you know, how he became a multimillionaire in just like two or three years. And he said a lot of it was, you know, law of attraction. He's working in a grocery store making under probably two, I think he said under two grand a month before when he was, you know, just two or three years ago. Now he's, you know, has is a multimillionaire. I think he has a Bugatti or what, you know, insane things like that. That's what he credits it to. You know, there's a lot of people who credit it, you know, people who, especially Bob Proctor in this list, we'll talk about him a little bit as well. A lot of people who credit that to law of attraction. Bob Proctor, I believe was cleaning, or was it cleaning floors? And then he, you know, against kind of all odds, you know, it does happen where you could do this, you know, probably not in the amount of time Bob Proctor did it, but there are people who've done it, it does seem reasonable, maybe over a 40 year period to do this or a 30 year period, or maybe a 20 year period at the minimum, he was cleaning floors, he started his own floor cleaning business and made I think the equivalent of a million dollars today in about a year. He said, you know, what separated there were a ton of people who had the same, you know, minimum wage job as he did or whatever cleaning floors. What did he do that was different? He didn't know in the beginning, you know, somebody gave him the book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. That I should add to this list. That's a really good book too. I like outwitting the devil a little bit better, um, but I should add that to this list as well. Everybody, I didn't even put it because everybody already knows about it pretty much, but it should be, you know, in here. I liked outwitting the devil better, but because Think and Grow Rich, if you just watch a lot of YouTube videos about law of attraction, you can kind of get the outcome, but he has a lot of good techniques in there still read it, still read it. Cause it kind of teaches you like the ways to write it down um, too. And that, that's a big thing, writing stuff down, you know, getting it, that subconscious, we'll talk about that some more in this video, but writing it down, you know, getting that subconscious thing in there too. Um, these are a lot of good names. There's no particular order, you know, of who's like better um, than, you know, others. Um, this was an older one. This is probably one of the first big people in it. He was um, around in the, he's been dead for a while. He was around in the early, 1900s, Neville Goddard. And I remember kind of when I was first learning about Love Trash, he's one of the names, you know, I came across, there was a subreddit, which was, um, had some good techniques. And then I um, listened to a few of, there's a few books by him, like uh, there's audio, pretty good audio um, narrations on YouTube. One is called Out of This World. He kind of interprets the Bible in a different way than um, obviously many people would be used to. There's certain people who are big on the law of attraction in terms of like interpreting it through the Bible, but there's also other people who um, interpret it other day, other ways, more black and white. I'm more of the latter, you know, more or less of like the Bible concepts, but it is very, you know, interesting to learn about too. And a lot of concepts, you know, I learned um, from, from him. You know, one is, you know, pretending you're doing an interview about, um, what you've accomplished, you know, it's a visualization technique. So if you're not familiar with law of attraction, it's visualization, feeling, you know, he always says feeling is a secret. And sometimes it's hard to feel, you know, you want to feel like you've already accomplished the thing you want, you know, whether it's a million dollars, whether it's a new car, you know, whatever it is, good health, whatever you want to feel like you've already accomplished it. Sometimes it's hard, you know, it's a hard thing to do. So it takes a, a lot of reading. Um, Bruce Lipton, you know, Bruce Lipton, I really like, I would suggest listening to like all of his interviews on, um, London Real. That's a good podcast we'll talk about. Um, I really like Brian Rose as well. He's the host of that podcast, if you're not familiar. And, you know, he has a lot of good interviews on there. His book is called The Biology of Belief. I read it. I think it's very good. 
Um, but I also think you could learn a lot of what's in that book just by listening to his interviews and sometimes uh, maybe even more engaging than that book, kind of putting it into practice. Listen, if you just type in Bruce Lipton, like interviews on YouTube, really good. But the London Real ones are really good with um, Brian Rose. There's also on, you know, it's a viral video that's kind of like one of those voiceover type uh, videos with B-roll with him talking about, you know, how you could come from, you know, a poor family and, you know, you're going to be told or you come from a rich family, you could be stupid your whole life and you, you may, you, you succeed at everything you try. And there's quite a few people that you see that, that are like that. I, I think a good example of that, I'm not going to say any names, but you know, how, you know how like people see like, you know, common people talk about this like rich person or that rich person, that celebrity, oh, that's such, such an idiot. He has no clue what he's talking about. And then sometimes you'll think like, oh, well, he's so rich. He's got to know what he's talking about. And then you'll like look deeper. Oh man, this, this guy messed up at this. Well, maybe he was smarter when he was younger. You know, you're, you're wondering. And I think a lot of it is just, you know, the programming, you know, a lot of us had when we were younger, a lot of it definitely is that, you know, our, how far you're going to get. Um, and he talks about, Bruce Lipson talks about a lot, you know, how you're, the matrix, you know, kind of how you're stuck in the matrix, that type of thing. A lot of people have said that now. Um, that, that's a big thing, you know, the rat race, the nine to five job, all that type of stuff, kind of being tra trapped in the matrix, you know, life's a struggle, you know, you got to be frugal, turn off the lights when you leave the room, you know, ask to go to the bathroom, all this, <laughs> not that, not that extreme, but you get what I'm saying, you know, less, less freedom, that type of thing, but you come from a rich family, that programming, you know, you're going to be told that type of thing. And it, it's all law of attraction too. You know, you grow up around, nice cars, nice houses, all these great things, not 100% of the time, but most likely you're going to be more programmed inclined to get these things. But, you know, don't don't get me wrong here. I'm, I'm not saying there's some certain times where maybe I didn't explain it the best way, but it, it doesn't mean, you know, it doesn't mean, I don't, I don't want to dismotivate anyone here. It doesn't mean that just because you didn't grow up in a rich family that you're not going to make it. No, no, not, not at all. That's kind of what the naysayers want you to believe. There's ways, a lot of ways to reprogram the subconscious mind. Meditations, you know, things you could listen to. Um, I don't want, maybe it's kind of, you got to have to learn this for yourself, but like the, you know, data waves, theta waves, you could learn about that. And then before you're falling asleep, you're in theta. That's where you're opening up the subconscious mind. Meditation also could boost creativity, help that type of thing. You got to control your thoughts. That's a huge, huge thing in life to accomplish anything, being able to control your thoughts because as, Joe Dispenza talks about on this list, you know, your thoughts dictate your reality. And that's one of the biggest things of law of attraction. There are so many examples too. you know, the things you go to sleep with, like as Naval Goddard tells you, will come up. There's so many examples of just the things you're thinking about as you're going to sleep, you go to sleep with abundance, you go, you should go to sleep as um, EO Locker Jr. That's a good YouTube channel you should check out as well. He's one of the first people, you know, before I, um, started getting having a lot of success in life one that i would watch and his old stuff i don't watch him as much anymore i'm sure it's, it's so good great but like certain people too like when they first start out you know when there's no pressure when they're general genuinely themselves and they first start the youtube channel they're it's their best work a lot of times because that's the work that got them viral you know it has to be good you know what i mean because that's the work where you came from you were nothing, nobody was watching you, and then you blew up. You get what I'm saying? Once you have that audience, there's you could keep that audience without, you know, kind of just being mediocre a lot of times. Um, that, that's kind of what I see too. So look at the things people did in the beginning. I'm not saying your new stuff can't be better, obviously not. It could be, uh, his new stuff could be a hundred times better. Who knows? I haven't even watched it too much lately, but a lot of stuff is, you know, the stuff that got you viral in the beginning, I think. Um, think that's something to think about and um talked about bob proctor he died recently um and you know he was the one about the cleaning floors he's got a book um you were born rich pretty good um you know good book and then the youtube channel is good some interviews with him are, are really good he's another good thing jake ducey is another youtuber i've watched really professionally done videos about law of attraction he does especially his new ones too he he got back into it and his channel's been blowing up late lately a lot and you know i like the stuff he talks about i really i really like what he he's somebody who knows what's going on in the world i think um and he he's able to you know do it in a good way a really good way the way he's able to convey um these ideas i believe he has a book as as well too and um yeah he's got some good videos he may seem cheesy um to some people a little bit but no he's pretty good i think um and 
one of the things too out, out of all this like these are quite a few names here um you know i think you should read multiple names i think bob proctor said in one interview you know if you're trying to learn about like law of attraction you know making money all these type of things you know pick kind of one name and focus on it because a lot of them you know they teach it in different ways so you may get confused kind of and you're all getting they, they all could give you the same kind of outcome but at the same time i like to get different perspectives i think if you're just putting all your eggs in one basket then that's a little you know that's a little may not be the most beneficial way to do it so these are a list of you know quite a few books um, that i really liked i've read a lot of books you know these are some that just come to mind at the top of my head these are probably the best books, you know, pretty much in terms of, I got one on meditation here, but um, it's mainly money-making, Think and Grow Rich, like I mentioned. That's a really good one. I think everybody should read that. I remember reading that, um, you know, it's been a, the thing with books too is you probably should reread them every, at least every few years. I would say the, the real important ones, the good ones that really resonated with you because you forget, like the human mind. I wish you could, I could remember, you know, exactly you know, what Think and Grow Rich told me you know when i read it um let's see like three years ago now but I, I really don't and i couldn't tell you exactly you know to as much as what i said i read this one more recently i waiting the devil the devil by napoleon hill and by the way most of the books i i listen to i don't read their audiobooks um one it's more convenient because um you know there's so many hours in a day i normally do it you know when i'm walking outside when i'm at the gym or um when i'm driving things like that because you know there's a lot of other stuff to do and you can't just be you know, there's only so much time. Time is a very, a very big asset too. And that's another concept that you should learn about. You know, time is your biggest asset in a lot of ways. And I think, um, yeah, I forget, probably, definitely a lot of people have said this, you know, nobody's really concerned about the 60 year old or the 65 year old who has a Lamborghini, who's driving around a Lamborghini while, you know, he's going bald and he's overweight. Nobody's really concerned about that. They're concerned about the 20 year old in the Lamborghini, the 18 year old in the Lamborghini, that type of thing. That's what they're concerned about. You know what I mean? Everything's a race to a certain extent. I think Jordan Peterson said that as well. Everything's a race. It's all about, not to say, you know, don't, I know there's a lot of older people who watch my videos too. Not to say that you can't do things when, when you're older, but it, everything, it looks more impressive when you're younger. Everything, that's, that's how it's going to be. But, it's kind of about speed, you know what I mean? Like it'll if you're 60 years old and you and I think that this is absolutely possible. And you you know you don't have much money now. Let's say you know you didn't plan out too well. I don't know. You, you just don't have too much of a retirement that type of thing. There's a lot of people like that. And then you make a lot of money in the next you know year or two. You, know, you turn it around maybe in the next three months. I think three months is a big area where you could change a lot of things in your life in three months. You change it in three months. That's equally as impressive. People care more about the 20 year old in Lambo because they know automatically, automatically he did it quickly. The 60 year old, you know, they think, oh, he's probably worked 40 years or he's just, you know, part of that generation that kind of had a lot handed to them. You know what I mean? They all have their 401ks, economy did, you know, all that type of stuff. But yeah, that's what you got to think about. So think you grow rich, uh, winning the devil. It's a really good audiobook. I think the audiobook is probably would be, I, I just listened to the audiobook. I think it's, it's, it, it's two voices. I think it's very, very well done. Great book. This is a really, really, really good book. Millionaire Fast Lane, MJ DeMarco. He kind of um, exposes like a lot of, you know, the mainstream, you know, just put money away, compound interest, re live frugally, you know, all, all that type of stuff. And, you know, that concept, you know, like books like The Millionaire Fast Lane, I haven't read it, but I know the main concept of it, um, which, you know, just re live frugally, put money away, you'll become a millionaire of history you know, repeats itself. If, uh, you know, we're not set. most likely it will, uh, most likely it will. But, you know, I think people watch this channel, people in the crypto people, you know, into what I'm into, you, you, you want more of ju just that standard life, you know, in the millionaire fast lane, or in the millionaire next door, whoever the hell wrote that book, I don't even know. But um, millionaire next door, that's more of, you know, you guys want that different kind you you want. So, let me just explain kind of what MJ DeMarco talks about in the millionaire fast lane. You know, there's three main things. There's the sidewalkers, which are, I think I, he has a great analogy audio, but he narrates audio book. It's very good. And he said, just watch judge Judy. If you want to see who's on the sidewalk, you know, people are just talking, making no money, have no jobs. They're talking about how they're victims, you know, that type of thing. And <laughs> that's one way either to get on TV, either be really, you know, dumb or really smart a lot of times. But 
Yeah, it's kind of like that. You know what I mean? And then there's the middle lane. And that's, you know, how most people are. That's the middle class. It's probably 70, 80 percent of people, may, if not more, um, at least in America. And, you know, that's, you know, putting money into the IRA, the 401k, working your nine to five job and being a good little boy. You know what I mean? That, that type of concept, you know, just a standard thing you know you, you help your help the owner of your company get rich you're not going to get rich you help the owner whoever owns your company get rich that kind of type of aspect some people would say that it's, it's a trap some people would say you know it's life's a struggle but that's the best thing there is um you know nothing wrong with that but i think if you're watching a video like this you want more and then there's the fast lane that's kind of basically fitting a need starting your own business what is business you're kind of fitting a need you know, find the need, the need that there is, find, you know, a talent that you have, something you're passionate about and find the need. If you don't know kind of what you're passionate about, if you don't know, you know, these things, that's, that's, that's a hard concept. You know, no one really knows kind of what they want to do um, a lot of times because, you know, maybe you do know what you want to do. You maybe you have multiple interests. Maybe you don't know what to pick. I think you want to go back up here, law of attraction, just focus kind of on the end. I think that would help you a lot. I know MJ DeMarco says, you know, Pretend, you know, a lot of people have said this. He, just, he was the only person who said this. Pretend that you already have, you know, all the money you want, the billions of dollars. Then what would you do? That's kind of what you're passionate about. And for me, sometimes I think about, you know, that type of thing. And it's not the things that I want to do. They're probably not really money making. It's kind of just um, wanted to get more into like meditation, that type of stuff. Learn more about that. Maybe you want to remember meditate. That's one of the things, you know, I'm thinking about if... Um, I wanted to take some time off. I could obviously do that now, but yeah, I, I don't know if that's the best example, but the, there are things like that that could help you kind of find a type of passion. And I think don't, maybe don't worry about, you know, don't worry about the way you're going to get the money. Don't worry about those things. Just worry about the end, the feeling, feel like you already have it and the pathway will come. You will, you will create and you will see, you know, those, those ways, you know, those, those paths. And I'm sure there's, you know, always there's something probably in the back. It's probably right next to you the whole time. And you just didn't notice it. And it's something you could find and use to possibly make a lot of money. Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. This is a really good book by Robert Kiyosaki. Talks about there are law of attraction concepts on this. There, it's a really good book. Very engaging. I remember I listened to the audiobook on this just in one straight line. I think it's I don't know, six hours or something. I was driving from back from phoenix to los angeles and I, it was that engaging you know you normally with books i would pause them you know listen to music or something but this one was that engaging very good book and you know he talks about you know why rich stay rich why poor stay poor all that type of stuff um it's really motivating too and i, I like there's a lot of things i like and I, I like one quote where he says um you know it's hard it was hard you know to get rich but it wasn't that hard and that's another thing too, you know, if you're going on this path, a lot of people are going to tell you it's so hard, you're going to work 20 hours a day, your life is going to be a living hell, all these type of things, that's that's a bunch of nonsense. Really, your life, you're going to work 20 hours a day, your life's going to be a living hell if you're just going down the beaten path. That's, you know, when you're doing this, it, it's, there are aspects that are challenging, but it, it's by no means was the hardest thing I've done in my life, you know, being, being successful at this young age. I, I put probably more hard work into college, more hard work into high school um, than I did to have the success of my age. So no, that, that's not, you know, I think it still can be hard, but it's not that hard. And I think, believe it or not, you know, you use the law of attraction correctly. It's going to be fun, man. Like it doesn't have, life isn't as bad as people say. They create, you know, that negativity. And we'll talk about more things too, you know, down this list a little bit. But they create that negativity a lot. And, you know, I'm telling you this one because it's true and two because if you think something is going to be hard and if you think something is going to be terrible, it's going to be, you know, you want to be more optimistic about it. You know, I think there was one concept from uh, Tim Ferriss and I'll talk, he's down here as well that he said, you know, whenever he's overwhelmed with something, he, he always thinks about what would this look like if it were easy? Ask yourself that question. What would it look like if this were easy? And then that, believe it or not, that could help you with a lot of things, you know, with investing, you know, with trading, with um, anything, self improvement what would this look like if it were easy? What would I do if this were easy? And then kind of do it in that way. And I think a lot of people, because there's a lot of concepts I'm throwing at you right now, a lot of people get overwhelmed with things. And what I would say with that is, 
don't get into analysis paralysis. Just, you know, um, what was I going to say? Just do something, you know, learn something. Something is always better than nothing. You know, the worst thing you could do, I believe, is nothing because you only have so much time. You matter, might as well make the most of it. Um, so, yeah. So let's see here. And then the book, and the last thing from Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he always says, you know, a poor, a poor person or a person who's not going to be rich or I, I forget exactly how he words this, but you know, he said his poor dad used to always say, I can't afford this. His rich dad would say, how can I afford this? You know, a person who's going to be successful, they're asking themselves, what could I do to be able to afford this? You know, you see that nice Lamborghini or that nice car, a poor person's a person with a bad mindset is going to say, I can't afford this. The person who's driving it did unethical things to get it. They're a terrible person. The person who's going to be able to afford that car is going to say, what can I do? They're questioning, what can I do to afford that? And they'll think about it and then they'll eventually find a way, hopefully. Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas, really, really good book. Um, teaches you that anything can happen. I think this book, you know, even if you're not into trading, you know, it could help you a lot because it's all psychology, the book. It's not, there's nothing with charts. It's not, there's no TA in this. It's all psychology, you know. And he teaches, you know, over and over again, anything could happen, anything could happen, anything could happen. I think that's one of the, you know, positives of life. Anything could happen. It is never, if everything was predetermined, life would be kind of boring in a way. You know, anything could happen. There's always surprises. Always be excited for what's what's yet to come. Anything could happen. Best, you know, you think the TA is the best way possible? No, it goes the other way. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. It's all about, you don't need to know what's going to happen. You know, two concepts. Anything could happen, number one. Number two, you don't need to know what's going to happen to make money. You just need, and that people, it, it, it's a little weird hearing that first. You may not understand it. Like, how, how could I, you know, make money if I don't know what's going to happen? You know what I mean? No, it's it's about having a strategy that works over time. You know, having TA is your edge. And then over time, you will be profitable. Still could be challenging, but I think, and I think a lot of things too with trading with all these things. You know, if you have that good psychological mindset, if you have, you know, using law of attraction concepts, that's, the biggest thing towards it, I think, in a lot of ways, you know, that that's what a lot of people who um, any type of like gambling, and I'm not talking obviously with trading, there's much more skill and talent and things, you know, put towards it than like winning the lottery. But a lot of these lottery winners, a lot of the, you know, things, um, they said they always knew kind of, they always knew. And I think that's another concept too. Like a lot of, I, I was listening to Robert Greene in a podcast the other day. He said, you know, when he was always young, he he thought he would always be successful. I always knew. And I, I think that's true in myself in a lot of ways. When I was young, I always maybe didn't know, but I always kind of thought, you know, I always, I always visualized the future of me being very successful. So I think that's, you know, one of the things there. Um, and now let's move on to this. So there's these two books by Ray Dalio. I've read Principles, at least most of it. It's a long book, really good book. I think everybody should read that. Principles for a Changing World Order. I read the full amount of it. This is really, 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 really good, especially for you know people thinking about you know what's going to happen with America, what's going to happen with the American Empire, you know, all the debt. And he talks about a lot of history in it. Great book, especially for what's going on in the world right now. Ray Dalio is a really, uh, really smart guy. You know, he's worth, I believe, twenty billion dollars. Like, the guy knows his stuff. Especially, like, everybody should look into this guy if you're into, you know, investing, trading, hedge fund, any anything in finance. I mean, the, the typical person everybody talks about is Warren Buffett, but that that's kind of rudimentary because, and they even say themselves, you know, we were kind of here. You know, me and Charlie, or Charlie says a lot. You know, Charlie Munger, we were here in this time. You know where we had that opportunity but Ray Dalio is younger than him you know he had to short the market in a way to be ahead with his hedge fund you know hedge fund you know what I mean it's different than you know Warren Buffett Charlie Munger just in that only time in the world in any empire ever where you could get that 10 percent a year for so many years in that compound interest you know it, it's a different way it's a little bit more skillful than I would say Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger and there's more motivation in kind of taking calculated risks rather than, you know, you're not just good enough, work your normal job. That's kind of the vibe I get from Warren Buffett, vote Democrat, and, you know, put your money in your 401k. I'm not saying that's not going to work. Maybe they're right. Maybe they'll, in the long term, all those people that do it will beat me. Maybe. Who knows? You know, I'm not necessarily, I'm just saying, you know, most of the people who watch this video, these videos, they're looking to be a little bit more advanced. Um, not to knock Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, but um, yeah. 
Power of Now, this is um, about meditation. Um, I think it's a really good book. I read this when I was in college um, a couple of years ago. Um, I think it's really good. I think everybody could, especially in modern time, you know, we got TikTok, Instagram, all these distractions everywhere. And, you know, I think attention span is one of the big things that's going to make you, you know, successful. I think even I was reading like kids, I don't know why exactly, but I think it could be its attention span. Like the standardized test scores are lower which that's essentially an IQ test. So that means IQ to, IQ scores are kind of getting lower. I think it may be a lack of focus because of all of these distractions. I think that's what it may be. You know, we're fed a lot of, you know, just bits and pieces and everything's kind of designed. You know, technology is so good where it's just so addictive and it just gets you, gets you in. And it's hard no matter who you are. You know what I mean? So I think it's essential to have at least some type of mindfulness practice, some type of mindfulness practice in this book is a really good book to start and learn more about it um if you guys have any like good resources for meditation i'm trying to learn a little bit more about that any good youtube channels to learn more about that leave a comment down below um power of your subconscious mind this is another kind of law of attraction book um by J dr joseph murphy really good book um listen to the audio book um talks about you know a lot of his way is a little bit different than um the volgadards um there's a lot of similarities though but you know, success, wealth, prosperity, you just repeat kind of those words to yourself and you'll keep thinking of that vision. That's really important. Just keep thinking of that vision. That kind of taught me, you know, if you grow up, you know, around all these things, if you grow up around all these things, nice cars, nice houses, all that, what are you exposed to? What's your future going to look like? A lot of that. But if you didn't, what could you do to still have that advantage, that subconscious advantage to reprogram your subconscious mind? Constantly think about it repeat those words, S success, wealth, prosperity, not necessarily those three words, but words that things that you want, you know what I mean? Podcast, really good podcast. So, um, London real is a really, really good podcast. A lot of really good interviews. I like his format, how Brian Rose has done it. Um, kind of good that he's more underground. He's not, I don't think he's nearly as big as either of these two guys, obviously way below Joe Rogan, but yeah, Dan Pena's interviews are really good on there. Um, Learned a lot from those. And Dan Pena, some people love him, some people hate him. I think he's, you know, for obvious reasons, just too, you know, <laughs> crazy sometimes. But there's a lot you can learn from him. And I think one of those biggest points is he says, like, low self esteem is one of the big, is a big issue on why people aren't successful. And you would think, you know, that it's really the opposite, that people are too entitled, have too much self esteem. Ent entitlement is different than self esteem. But have too, too much self-esteem, you know, they're too prideful or whatever, but really they're not. I think a lot of people who act entitled, they're entitled because they think there's no possibility that they could be successful on their own. That That's kind of why they're entitled. That's kind of from the negative programming. And Dan, Dan Pena talks about this type of stuff. He says, you know, when he was young, he used to go to houses he couldn't afford, you know, open houses, houses for sale he couldn't afford. He used to wear suits he couldn't afford. He used to go to Rolls Royce dealerships before he could afford it and not buying the car, just seeing, you know, smelling and seeing the car, you know, that visualization, it's all law of attraction there. He talks about that stuff as well. And I think that's what I did a lot. You know, when I was in my early twenties, I did a lot of that type of stuff. Um, and I think the visualization kind of helped me a lot. Um, I think there's a lot to learn there. Bruce Lipton talked about him before. He has some good interviews in London real, like I mentioned, Joe Dispenza, um, this is a good name too. He's a little bit more complicated, but um, he's good too. Talks about more of the science behind all this stuff. If you're somebody who's a skeptic, somebody who wants to learn more about the scientific um, principles behind all this, Joe Dispenza is really good. His um, interviews on Run London Real are really good. He's got some good books too. I've read um, Becoming Supernatural um, and Break the Habit, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. I've read a lot of that. Um, should should go through that again. Um, and then there's many other you know episodes that are really good on London Real. Tim Ferriss has a really good podcast. I bet I've gotten away from it a little bit in recent times. I remember when I was in college, I was just so like into this type of stuff, so into self improvement. Like whenever I would, when I was out at the gym, I would make sure always listen to a podcast, don't listen to music. Every you know every minute I had, always try to listen to something, learn something new, and. I think it helped me a lot in the long term. I mean, I, when I first graduated college, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I kind of just looked like a failure in a lot of ways. But um, I think in the long term, a lot of this stuff has uh, really helped me. And Naval Ravikant's interview on there is really good. 
his interview on, I, I mean, everybody knows Joe Rogan. His interview on Joe Rogan is really good as well. I'd listen to both of these. They're both very good. He's got a good technique for meditation as well. So it takes a while, like half hour a day. Well, that's not that long, but, um, or even longer. I think I got to read about it again. I might try his kind of technique. Um, very smart guy. He, he, I've learned a lot from him. Um, I agree with like almost everything he says. His Twitter is pretty good too, like I mentioned. Um, and Wim Hof method. This is getting more into like health type stuff. I think this, you know, this is good for meditation too, because this puts you kind of in a meditative type thing. Um, there's a lot of really good benefits to this. The cold exposure, I'm not going to talk about too much of it here, but the breathing is really good, the cold exposure. There's a lot of, there's instructors in America, probably instructors all over the world. Um, but you could learn a lot of it on your own too. I would suggest if you have kind of the, the ability to work one-on-one -on -one with somebody, um, maybe in just an hour session, um, somebody who's an expert on this type of stuff, you could get a lot out of it. Um, if you can afford it, you know, if it's close to you as well. Um, there are classes too, um, like group classes too, that are really useful a lot of, in a lot of places. Um, Self-improvement YouTube channels I really liked. Um, Fight Mediocrity, I, these two first channels I used to listen to a lot. I don't even know if they're as active anymore when I was in, um, watch a lot when I was in college a few years ago. The book summaries on here are very good. The animated book summaries, they're very, very good. I used to love these. Improvement Phil, he's got a lot of really good advice. Um, I would suggest on both these channels, probably just go to their most popular, like most viewed videos and kind of start from there, I would say. Because they're probably ones from a few years ago, but they are both really good. And Elijah Long, I mentioned this name. Um, I've talked to this guy on the phone, actually. He's not, he's about, has about 100,000 subscribers. He has been in the game for a while, just making YouTube videos about self-improvement. And I really like a lot of what he said. He's very motivating. Um, I haven't watched him lately as much, but um, it, there's a little bit of it. Like, he's funny, too, like comedy aspect of it, entertainment aspect. But he, he's really good in terms of self-improvement. Really impressive, um, you know, what he, in terms of bodybuilding, what he was able to kind of accomplish naturally there. Um, and this is a channel that I've been watching. It blew up. Like, this channel just exploded over a million subscribers now. Kind of, it seems like overnight, like very quickly. I, I don't even know how long he's been doing it. doing it. He's got, like, a really, you know, cool way of doing things, like the Jeffrey versus Adonis thing. He's very talented and very engaging the way he's able to kind of put his videos together. Um, and he knows his stuff, you know, he knows his stuff for self-improvement. That's kind of why he, it was unique the way he did it. And he really, really blew up there. So yeah, I really like, I, I have to watch him a little bit more, but he's had some really good videos and the stuff he talks about, I feel like it's not the thing YouTube's going to, you know, put on the from everybody's front page. I think it's a lot of the way he blew up just a lot of like word of mouth, like people just sharing his videos, which is very impressive the way he did it. So yeah, he's a smart guy, real smart guy. Um, and then weightlifting too, just, you know, some good workout. You know, one of the things I started with struggled to, and you would think that, you know, maybe I'm just not looking the right places for this. But one of the things I struggled to find when I started like lifting weights in the gym was just a workout routine to follow. Like I can never really find a good one on the internet, but Jeff Dimpered, I think they're, you have to pay for them, has some good routines. They're not expensive. Um, there might be some free ones he has too that I, I pretty much follow whenever I work out one of his routines. He's got some good ones. And he knows what he's talking about. His YouTube videos, he knows what he's talking about too. Um, there's a lot of like toxic people. Like fitness YouTube too is just like, there. Are, it's a lot of them just dissing each other. And it's just, crypto is like that, but not as bad. That, that's another thing too. Like like anybody who's, you know, who just is like the toxicity, I, I do not. That kind of irritates me too, because I don't know. It, it's just like, you know, we're all so successful here, you know, and, we're resorting to that, you know what I mean? Just like hating each other, you know, dissing each other like that. Like, come on, you know, let's be, let's be the successful adults, successful mature adults that we are here. Um, Athlete X is another, he know this guy knows what he's talking about. Um, he's a physical therapist. Um, he has some really good, I always, almost all the ab workouts I do right now are just those like guided ones. He's got some really good guided ab workouts and they, they're really good. Um, He's got a lot of good techniques for like back pain, fixing posture, that type of stuff that I really liked as well. Um, when you're lifting, it's always you know important to you know, stretch, keep good posture because 
you know, you're going to injure something eventually if you keep moving up in weight and weight. I've been pretty lucky. You know, I haven't injured something, but be very, you know, be careful, especially as you, um, you know, get a little bit older too. I'm still, I'm only 25. I'm still kind of young, but you know, you got to realize things do happen. So yeah, I don't know how long this video has been. Um, I hope you guys got something out of it. These are, you know, the main things I've really looked at, you know, it's, it's hours and hours and hours and hours of content and then there's much other self-improvement content as well these were just the ones that you know were most memorable the things i got the most out of so i hope this helped you guys in some way and um, if you enjoyed the video please subscribe um, please leave a thumbs up and yeah check out my other concept um, if you're new to crypto you yeah, check out my or new if you're into crypto interested in it i don't know if you just found me or whatever Check out my other videos. I do technical analysis primarily on this channel, but I wanted to do something different today and show you because a lot of people like these type of videos too. So I wanted to show you this. Um, yeah, guys, have a good one. Goodbye.